Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Saki, and we are at the Transformative Technology Conference. We are now sitting down with Boris and Mike from Conscious. What's up, guys? How's it going, Alan? Thank you for coming on to the show and talking to me. Appreciate it. Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah, it's such a pleasure. I'm excited to talk about this, um, this so-called, uh, this wireless biofeedback system that can help increase state self-awareness. I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, before that, let's talk about who you guys are. So how did you guys even get to the point that you're at today? I think maybe Mike can kick us off with that one. Sure. Cool. I'll start. So um, about four years ago, I was an entrepreneur working at Lululemon in their tech department. And basically, um, I ended up leaving there because it was less meditation and yoga and too much work. So I ended up becoming an entrepreneur and deep dove into two specific uh, kind of uh, jobs or industries. One was romance publishing, so publishing books about mm -hmm. romance. I didn't um, tell the pink shirt, you know? Yeah. 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 I honestly know nothing about that industry. It's just business. <laughs> <laughs> I became one of the top romance publishers in the world at wow. one point. Um, and then I dove into e-commerce and ended up being one of the top Facebook marketers in the world. I was spending about thirty to $50,000 a day on Facebook advertising. Holy and cow. so I made a lot of money in that. And now here's Conscious. And essentially the vision of Conscious came to me as I was meditating with Boris down in uh, LA, I think at the time, about eight months ago. And um, I had this vision of really just liberating people on all levels. Mm -hmm. And what that means is paying people to essentially meditate and be rather than do mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so this is our passion project and now we're working on it full time so okay that's my background. okay cool cool yeah. Boris let's hear about yours I have a lot of questions so let's yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah my background uh, coming you know from my um, professional background is in psychotherapy so ever since um, ever since I kind of started diving into this understanding of how do we you know, the, how do we heal and how do we optimize the human experience? It really um, grabbed me. And so I went through various different trainings, healing modalities, looking into body work, looking into breath work, looking into neurofeedback um, and seeing what, what is it that really makes for that liberated human experience. When Mike went into e-commerce, I kind of followed him uh, down that path. And we, we both had some really great success in e-commerce. Um, but it was also very um, draining for me because that had nothing to do at all with what my calling is, with what I felt I was here for. And so, you know, when, when this opportunity came about, when these ideas started to kind of um, ripen in, in our minds, it was very exciting to just dive in and to really serve from the heart and to put all of our skills to use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. So... All right. So it seems as though, you know, a lot of entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of high tech sort of figuring out the cutting edge tech stuff, a lot of psychotherapy. Um, and then so then this this moment of aha, we're going to start to pay people to do to be instead of do. All right. How does one get paid to just be? Yeah, so this is kind of the initial concept of why this vision came to be. Yeah. Since then, it's obviously just like any startup taking a lot of twists and turns. Now, the ability to pay people comes with cryptocurrency and the blockchain. So as you know, for the first time in human history with the blockchain, we're able to create shared value economies. And what that means is if me and you share a value, in this case, let's say we say meditation is valuable or alleviating stress is valuable, then we should be rewarded in some way, shape, or form. And so now we can literally just create some sort of trust mechanism between mm -hmm. me and you, and then we can flow currency or cryptocurrency back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so this trust mechanism, and this is how we kind of got in the quantified self movement, um, was how do you determine if somebody's meditating? Mm -hmm. So we went down that path and we found the key metric, which is HRV. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we started looking at quantifying the self, essentially. Is it, so, the, so the HRV ends up being more varied when someone is meditating rather than... Correct. I believe it goes into higher states of There's um, a HRV. Of patterns. So yeah. he, when you analyze... Oh, sorry. You go. Yeah, this is the same. There's a couple of patterns. So when you analyze um, HRV on the power spectrum, you can see... Um, you can see specific frequencies light up. One is called the meditator's peak. Mm. So when somebody's actually meditating, mm -hmm. you 
can see that in the change in their physiological uh, biomarkers. Which ones are you measuring specifically? So specifically, it's HRV. Mm -hmm. And so as I said, the meditator's peak is when you're doing an analysis of HRV, on a, on a, when you plot it on a graph, you can see a very distinct signature mm -hmm. that a person is meditating, mm -hmm. of what's happening in their heart when they're coming into a meditative state. And that meditative peak is that, because I've seen some of these uh, analyses before, and yeah, there is for sure a distinct peak. Um, now, is that distinct peak, is that a state of them really getting to a, a, a peak of what would you say that is? This is a really good question. So this peak is associated with a state called, um, popularly it's called coherence. coherence Scientifically, yeah. it's called uh, respiratory sinus arrhythmia which sounds like a disease. <laughs> Respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Which means yeah. that your breath um, and your heart are synchronizing into a coherent, singular wave that starts to entrain, oh that starts to entrain your entire body and all of your organ systems. Mm -hmm. So your body comes into the most efficient state, both in terms of your mental performance and your physiology. Interesting, so uh, r respiratory sinus arrhythmia means that my breath and my heart are coming into sync and therefore my physiology, my, all my organs are kind of, they're all synced. There's yeah. this coherence rather than the uh, high beta, just da -da 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 running around, just blah, 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 blah blasting yeah. through stuff. And that way there's no real, real rhythm when you're doing that versus, so that peak is that, is that state of complete coherence or rhythm that yes. you can have as, it's like a cadence, a like life cadence almost. If you can keep that as long as possible throughout your life, then you can likely live longer, healthier, happier, uh, and be more kind to people. There's lots of yeah, good things that come from this. So, okay, so that's like a lot on the science. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to just tag on to yeah. one thing. There's one more important correlation when this state occurs, when we can see this HRV marker, and that's that at that point, um, the brain also goes into alpha. So as you, you were starting to mention, like the, this kind of arrhythmic uh, beta. So when we start to see coherence, we actually start to see heart-brain coherence as mm -hmm. well. So Beautiful. we really have that um, peak. It's the underlying physiological state of flow. Yes. That's what happens uh, when yes. we start to feel really in the moment, really tuned in. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, all right, let's go back to the blockchain stuff. So, and then I actually, I also want to talk about the uh, biofeedback, how you're actually connect, col collecting it wirelessly. So, um, on to the blockchain stuff quick. Um, give me the breakdown of why, I, how I meditate, I accrue some sort of currency that has some sort of worth, and there's some sort of accountability between people to, to be. So yeah, let's let's unpack that. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, the blockchain right now, as many people know, is in a weird state, especially cryptocurrency, where we had that huge rush last year, and we see many projects get funded and then instantly fail or shut down. Um, so we are taking a safer approach, and I, I recommend this for any startup company right now, is really to create an economy where you have a large amount of users. Our goal is 1 million users to start that are going through your in-game economy gamification token or uh, basically your points system and ensuring that that is sustainable before you implement blockchain into it. Because what we're seeing is people are launching these ICOs um, with poor tokenomics models mm -hmm. that are not sustainable. Uh, and then it's just it's n just not going to last. So really, you need to create a real core company core product, company, yeah. have blockchain in the back of your mind yeah. and stay on top of it. Yeah. And then when it comes time, you just turn it on. So you're a centralized ledger for the first hundred percent year or yeah. two or whatever it requires until you get the million um, users that are frequently using the platform. And then you see you've proved your concept and then you can decentralize it. And you can move slowly, slowly towards decentralization. Yeah, we yeah. still don't believe in a fully decentralized system, um, especially in this wellness space. We don't yeah. think it's, it's maybe it's not even necessary at this point. Interesting. Other markets, why? Like financial markets. Yeah. You know, yeah. That well, you're not sense. trying to capitalize on people meditating. You're, you're just trying to help people meditate. And yeah. So there's an, yeah, I guess that it can make sense. Like and ideally, I think in the, in the next year or two, or maybe five years, we'll start to see 
um, specifically blockchains related to wellness. And right now we're not really seeing totally. that. We have one-off projects like High Vibe Network, which are paying people to meditate also. Mm -hmm. um, we have Shivom, which is storing DNA on the blockchain and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But really nobody's proven anything at this point. So it's really too early. And this is why we've, we've taken the concept of blockchain, put it in our documents, letting people know that this is on our radar, mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to turn it on until maybe next year. We'll see how the market goes. But Okay. And yeah. then let's go back to the wireless biofeedback system. So how are you collecting HRV wirelessly? Yeah. So in the beginning, we also, just as you see at this conference, you see that uh, many people are creating these different wearables, um, different things to basically have a, a sort of hardware that you interact with the, the product through. And this is what we were thinking too in the beginning. But when we started to do more research, we realized that there is technology available. Technology really comes under the name of computer vision. So computer vision is a way of using cameras, just like the cameras mm -hmm. we have here, but pulling them through uh, signal processing um, algorithms that filter it to such an extent that, for example, when I look at you, I can't see your pulse. Totally. Right? But um, computer vision can through filtering in a certain way, we can actually see how the blood goes up each time your heart beats, if it's it flushes your face. If it's that acute, right? If it's got to be really sensitive to it's, well, pick up. Even the like commercial uh, consumer level cell phone front facing camera can do it. So it's really more about the filtering algorithms. Um, what it's really doing is it's looking at the minute change in color mm -hmm. on the pixels that are representing your face on the on the video stream and when you magnify those when you magnify the difference mm -hmm. our eyes can pick up the difference but when the computer is magnified then you can see very distinctly flush mm -hmm. flush yeah. mm -hmm. and so we that, can that's really distinct I, I mean that's a very minute difference it's a, it's such a hard distinction to make th that if I that's a really sensitive technology that I would have to pick that up it's just yes. it's just interesting to me that this is now coming out with even a front-facing camera on a stock cell phone that can, yeah. they can do that. It's very accurate, too. I think we're at like 94% 90. accuracy compared to ECG or EKG, which is the gold standard for 94 measuring. 94% with the front-facing camera. Yeah. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah, it's yeah. cool, hey? That, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. So yeah. that really frees us up from having to have that barrier yeah. to entry of having to buy more hardware. Hardware and wear it. Yeah, so time, you can yeah. use any computer or any um, tablet or any cell phone to actually practice and to get feedback that you're really getting progress, that something's really happening. You're not just sitting there listening to a playlist, but you're really seeing that things are changing as you are training or meditating. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> hmm. Damn. So, so then, it, it, okay, so you're wirelessly col collecting it. So then, you conscious. So I would download conscious. Is that how I would do this? And then, yeah. okay, so I would download conscious. And are you on both stores right now? So stores? we haven't launched yet. Okay. But the way that we are launching is that there is this underlying core technology of contactless biofeedback. That's really its goal is to optimize for stress reduction. That's what it's essentially looking for. So as you come closer to the flow state, of course, w the corollary is that you're coming out of stress states, mm -hmm. right? So um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be launching it as uh, multiple applications. One is gonna be a multiplayer uh, meditation application. And another one mm -hmm. is coming under the umbrella of conscious games, where you're gonna use the same exact mechanism, except now we can put it into uh, categories such as kids games, where simply that you know they're progressing on the screen based on very simple exercises to get them into a little bit of a higher coherence mm -hmm. so they're learning mm -hmm. self-regulation as they're playing okay so <clears throat> for for now you've just tested the technology and tested your your games and your your processes with yes. with people and then you're aiming to launch this soon yeah yeah we're we're I'm not sure. I th it would definitely be in 2019. So right now we have the prototypes ready. We're optimizing them for accuracy. We're kind of putting the skins and the beauty around them because this is a very important aspect to totally. be able to present something beautiful, polished, and clean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there, there were things. There were things you just mentioned. This both this 
group, this group meditation um, and this gamification of mod meditation. So what would, that, what would that look like for, for me to turn on conscious on my phone and then to just prop it up against the wall and just sit there in front on a cushion in front of the front facing camera and just meditate and then accrue points in-game in points that could potentially be useful for something as long as other people found them valuable. Yeah. Do you want to say more on this or do you want me to keep going? Maybe you can elaborate on the two other products, products yeah. which might give him more. Yeah, yeah. So, because it's important. Yeah, important. so we have two other products which might give you a better use case. And cool. it really, since we are, we have four products on the roadmap, we're really looking for our investors. So we're opening a seed round of $2 million at this point um, to give us guidance and really see which one of these products our attention should really focus on. Mm -hmm. One of the products which Boris didn't mention was um, something called the Conscious Plugin, which is essentially a plugin in your browser which will allow you to then see what you're consuming on the internet and how that's affecting your, your nervous system essentially, mm -hmm. right? So people can start to see, let's say they're on Facebook for an hour mm -hmm. and they start to see their coherence level start to go down. Mm -hmm. Well, then we can warn them in real time, mm -hmm. right? So that would be a, probably a bigger use case for the masses. That's kind of interesting. Can you use the front facing camera on the laptop? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's more stable than the smartphone, right? So there's mm -hmm. certain challenges. Um, we are getting it to a point where we have motion detection, so it's very accurate. So even if you are kind of moving the smartphone, it mm -hmm. should still be able to uh, track it accurately. Damn, I wonder what percentage of time spent on social media actually increases coherence or decreases. Totally. And this is what we're seeing in, in the kind of cultural trend, right? That people are becoming more and more aware of what they're consuming, fake news, all this stuff. Um, so just making it people more aware of it. Yeah. Quantifiably. Yeah. 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 It's actually quite rare that I think I, I leave the social platforms feeling more coherent. I think it's, 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 the only times I leave it feeling mo more coherent, I guess, is when I see that, you know, maybe the Dalai Lama tweeted something and then I really liked the tweet and I retweeted it or whatever. And then I got off the platform right away. Something like that. You right. Know? Yeah. yeah. You spend just a minute on it and, you know, you go and see someone that said something about someone's, you know, like they're, that they're so grateful for something. And then you're like, oh, that's great. And then you're really grateful for a moment and then you get off the platform. So like th that's like really good experiences. But whenever you see the the firefights that are going on and stuff, that's never increases gratitude. It never increases coherence. It's just, yeah, it's just a firefight. And we're really riding a huge wave. Uh, we're not the only ones, right? We just saw Apple's releasing some headphones that start to track um, your HRV just using the headphones. So they'll be able to link that that's to next music iteration. playing or whatever and seeing how that, your consumption of music maybe. That's yeah. interesting. So is that their next iteration of those wireless headphones? Is I that think they, so. Tim was showing us that yesterday with the headphones that had uh, sensors in them for, but he wasn't doing HRV, he was doing um, um, measuring neural activity around that region. And then it seems as though we are, uh, uh, all of the companies are trying to move to a place where they have additional data to work with, so uh, biomarker data. So. Okay, what's the fourth one? That was, that was three you've listed now. So what's the fourth one? The fourth one is a workplace app. So just like many people are working on corporate SaaS products, um, we also have that in the roadmap. And that just makes sense. Although based on a lot of the uh, feedback from the program, uh, a lot of people are saying don't go down the B2C route first. Start with, or don't go down to the B2B route. Mm -hmm. Start with B2C, yep. get a wide net, and yeah, then yeah. go B2B. So what do, you, what do you quickly just, what would you... Um, Go through, go through all four one more time again. Sure. So we got the multiplayer meditation app. We have something called Conscious Games. And then we have the Conscious Plugin and the Conscious Workplace app. And the difference between the first two again is? The meditation app and the games. Yeah. So the meditation app is really for people that are using, let's say, Headspace and Calm, existing meditators. Maybe we'll catch some new meditators just with yeah. um, a lot of the uniqueness of our product. And then Conscious Games is you can think of it like, so we can explain one of the games, which is on our roadmap, which is called Beautiful Minds. And essentially, you're using your coherence levels to open a flower. Yeah, that's right. So that targets yeah. people that may not necessarily be interested in meditation per se, but they're interested in maybe the novelty or something beautiful opening. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we um, also just talked to 
um, Peter Freer from Freer Logic, and he's he has a meditation game where it's about coherence, opening a flower. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. And there's so many <clears throat> use cases. It doesn't have yeah. to be around mindfulness too. We can race rocket ships, totally. for example, using yeah. coherence, right? To the moon or whatever. So again, Mars. our goal is to reach a billion people, just like many companies here. Yeah. And with our marketing backgrounds, we think we can do that and cast yeah. a widen. That's that right. Net. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the science mixed with the the business is very important to actually get it out to people. You know, I guess one thing that I'm starting to realize is that there's this there's this trend that occurs with uh, companies that I, I have the opportunity to, to, to discuss with or, or mentor. And one of them is, for example, at Indie Bio, which is the largest seed stage biotech accelerator. When I'm talking to entrepreneurs there, a lot of them are building out some sort of a, uh, a therapy to some sort of a problem within the human body and that they want to solve that problem take example like cancer or whatnot, and it, I'm, I'm constantly trying to press them to find what is the golden solution. Like what is the thing that could potentially wipe it all away? And with this, there's a lot of silver keys being developed in a sense. And so I think that might, same thing might be true about transformative technology. There might be a lot of silver keys being produced, which is great because we're learning, we're figuring things out. Um, there's different markets for different things. And I just, I, I do feel there is some sort of a gold standard for transformative technology, for, for edging people closer towards coherence that has yet to be, I guess, manifested and scaled to a billion people. But it could be you guys. It could be the, the, some of the other people that we've talked to. It could be how you guys share information and share communities that, that, that get there. It's all, that's, that's just a repeating pattern that I guess I'm seeing. And, that it's, it's, inter it's interesting to, to me because it goes across these different nodal networks of, of impact across sciences or yeah, fields. I love that. Boris and I were talking about that on the walk here. It's essentially, it doesn't matter what the, the how is. It just matters that we set our, our vision really and have faith that it's going to happen. And the technologies, like you said, the silver keys will appear. Yeah. And yeah, we'll be able to solve this. So, yeah. Boris, you want to say anything around that? Yeah, I mean, w one thing that I just wanted to riff off of what you were sh sharing is like, what are we doing here as humanity, right? Because mm -hmm. you're talking about this golden key, right? This golden thread that ties everything together. We're, tr we're all trying to solve problems, but what is that core that is like, what's that uh, wellspring from which all the problems are sprouting? And we're like, okay, I'm going to get this one and this one and this one, and you get that one. But what is that? And so, you know, this is kind of how we also in this inception of this company, we're thinking about this more as a movement. Like, what is it that we actually need to change for humanity to be different, right? And so we started looking at what is the commonality? Well, the core commonality is that we all want to be happy. We are all seeking a better feeling, right? Okay. So, but what's happening day to day? We know exactly. We actually heard this in the conference. We know what to do. Science tells us all the time, if you do this and this mm -hmm. and this, you will be better. Yeah. We don't do this. <coughs> These things, so what is it that's blocking us day to day that is not allowing us to feel the gratitude that we know we can mm -hmm. feel, to mm -hmm. meditate, to go out for a walk in nature, to, to commune with, um, with our loved ones, yeah. right? What's stopping us? And so... What do you think is stopping us? Yeah, so this is, this is it. So like in, in public speak, if we say something that is very easy for everyone to understand, I would say that it's stress. Is essentially stress. Mm. If we can go mm. down levels and we can talk about it more as really it's a lack of self-awareness. Like we're just not aware of what we're doing. Yeah. What is it that like what it, like taking this action will create what result? We don't really know. We think we do, but then oh it turns out wrong. And it's also the secondary part of it is lack of self-regulation. Like again, it's we have all of the tools to apply it, right? The emotion is happening inside of our body. You're not making me feel any way. This is the fundamental reality. It's, it's proven by science. It's been taught, you know, through the wisdom traditions. Nobody's making you feel any kind of way. The feelings are sprouting here based on your, how you're reacting to your own sensations. Now, what if we start to train and put attention on this area and we start to say, wait a minute, if I am the source of my happiness of my feelings of how I feel well then maybe this is 
uh, an area to focus, instead of focusing out there, what can I do to change out there so I feel better? What if I change something in here and mm -hmm. I feel tremendous? What if I discover that wellspring within me? Mm -hmm. And this is essentially you know, what we're building this technology around. Whether it's you know, contactless biofeedback or something else that comes along in the future, it doesn't matter. What matters is how do we um, point attention to this area for, for the greater human collective so that we can start to really make some difference at the causal level instead of at the level of all the different effects that sprout from here. Yeah. yeah. You point to something that I found really interesting. You said that if you could make an easy word to describe it, it would be stress, what's holding us back from coherence. And I like that. It's really simple. And self -aware, the lack of self-awareness, those, those two things together it makes it makes a lot of sense and then so I, I just came back from my fourth 10-day meditation retreat vipassana yeah yeah and so you know when you realize that you are the sensation happens and then you react or you observe and then you kind of like you start understanding that you are the source of how you feel and everything to, to, the, to the outside world and then when when you kind of start mastering that process What's nice is that then it makes it so that you can vibrate on a state of bliss no matter really what's going on around you. And then, then if we can build the communities around the world that also help so that the, when a children's born, they don't have to be born into stress. They can be born into a community that helps the child get the, the inward growth and flourishing. So, so yeah. Absolutely. All right. So it seems like you know, we covered a decent amount of, of conscious. So you're going to be using the front-facing camera on either a cell phone or a computer, and you're going to be uh, having people play either group meditations, or they're going to be playing individual games, or they're going to be you're going to be observing their browser activities. You're going to be using blockchain technologies down the line. Um, you're going to be building up this base through really strong marketing. Um, you're going to have your own. Uh, value currency that people can exchange what are they going to be able to use that for yeah so this is again as you see what we're doing here is we're taking it step by step and experimenting since we're both coming from the background of marketing like our mind always goes to like a b testing mm -hmm. market survey like what is actually going on what do people actually want and how, what are they using and not using so one um very basic use case, I would say, is um, this app Sweatcoin, right? Sweatcoin, have you heard of it? No, I don't think so. It went up to number one in Europe and the States on the top free apps. Mm. Okay, and what it is, is it's a walking app. Now, mm. we've had step counters for how many years now? Oh like my a gosh. decade, right? Or more. Yeah. Okay, so why is this happening now? What they've done, and they're not a blockchain, they're mm. also experimenting and playing in this field. But they, the, each time you walk, they give you a portion of a sweat coin, which mm -hmm. is like a cryptocurrency, but it's not. It's not a true cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. It's just an in-game, you know, it, it's just like any, any other game. And coin. what do you do with the sweat coins? And so what you can do is they have their partner offers. So, for example, you can, um, perhaps if Muse is on there, you can say, okay, maybe a, a month subscription of Muse you can get for free. So... Or you know they, they have From other walking. other sure, different sure. Um, since their Maybe focus they can is walking with a, like a salad chain and you can exactly yeah, you yeah. see different like health foods you see different athletic gear different things like this that are relevant to that demographic so so you're basically trading steps for v other value in in the world yeah that's, so that, that's that's pretty cool okay so then would you be similar to that so we could explore we can start exploring a similar model so we have partners. Um, for example, that host retreats. Mm -hmm. So offering at least partial scholarship to the retreats as you're meditating, right? Things that are relevant to sure, people sure. and also connecting with yoga studios, connecting with, so this is kind of looking at a mutual network, um, the mutually beneficial network that can support both you know, the client and our partners and, um, and ourselves to be able to offer something really cool. And so, what's it called? What's your coin called? Conscious OS, what's the coin called? I think in, in the beginning again we can just call it conscious coin. We had conscious it conscious coin. Cool. Yeah, we that, had it as cool. wisdom coin in, in the in the beginning. But, I like that. That's yeah. cool. Is there something else about conscious that we should know as we finish up our conversation? This is where I like to close my eyes and just meditate on it. Mm -hmm. Something you should know about conscious. Mm. 
you're going to start to see it everywhere. Is, is I think you're going to start to see it everywhere. And it's going to be beautiful. And it's going to be so beautiful that you're going to want to try it for sure. So I think just be on the lookout. You can check out consciousos.com. Um, yeah, links yeah. in the bio. Yeah. Yeah, check them out. Awesome. Nice. I, I, I do see that. I do see that. I see a very bright future of a more aware, less stressed communities. Yeah. Love it, Marley. Flourishing. Yeah. It's a beautiful place, Transformative Technology Conference. Beautiful people like yourselves. Thank you for what you're working on. Huge so blessed. Thank you, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, and this has been a, this has been a lot of fun. I really thank appreciate you, you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Marley. Boris, Mike. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you're thinking about what this technology could look like, what we could do by decreasing stress around the world and increasing self-awareness. And go and create, go and build the future, go manifest your dreams into the world. Much love, everyone. Cheers.